What's up, Digitamers? Today's interview is amazing. I brought you guys the 11th spot Blue Omni deck piloted by Marcel Senki Long, aka Digislots. He runs his own YouTube channel. You can look it up. It's Digislots. I'll have a link down in the description below. And if you haven't seen the breakdown for all the deck, I'll leave it up here. Uh, you can go see the top 16 breakdown for all the decks that won. Digislots took 11th spot with the Blue Omni deck. We have him here to talk about Blue Omni. We haven't had anybody talk about Blue Omni on the competitive level yet. So we're really excited about this interview. I think you guys are going to learn a lot. Make sure you guys watch till the end. And everything is timestamped for your convenience. So you're going to find everything exactly where you want it. If you're brand new here... I just want to introduce myself. The Batatonator TCG is here to bring you value. We get you exclusive interview. We cover all the tournament results for major tournaments on the North American, maybe even on the global scale. Uh, we bring you news releases, anything new, anything exciting, cool deck profiles. Soon we'll get you some gameplay. Make sure you guys subscribe down below. Make sure you guys also subscribe to Digislots to get his content. He's an amazing Digimon player, and let's have an interview. I'll jump into the interview and see why did he even start playing Digimon. So let's jump in. All right, Marcel. So we are live. You can go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about who you are. Why did you start playing the game, and what got you into Digimon TCG, and uh, why are you so competitive? Have you been competitive before? Hi guys, I am Marcel Senkelang, known as Digislots. I'm 24 years old and coming from Germany. Um, I play uh, other TCG like Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, competitive, playing there a lot of tops, topping at uh, big tournaments like YCSs. Um, the game just frozen because like we have Corona right now and we can play. And Digimon comes out. I watch Digimon um, and Yu-Gi-Oh! I was a little kid, and it recognized recognized me that I was was like, okay, if games come out, let just look into the game and. Let's play testing it. I bought this place with my friends and playing like homies. And then I thought the game was getting bigger and bigger, like getting more people. And when the first tournament comes up, like TCG was making a pre-release, getting all players invited together, and then we play. And at this moment, I was uh, I knew that this game is my game. Amazing, amazing. So you you already had a small background in TCG, and you already knew about Digimon. And then, so your love for the TCG uh, combined with the, your love for Digimon. Right now, this is the perfect setup. This is the perfect game. This is what you chose to keep playing. This is one of your favorite games right now, is what you're saying? Yes. I quit Yu-Gi-Oh! because I'm playing Digimon. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. You actually quit Yu-Gi-Oh! for Digimon. So fantastic. Welcome, welcome, Marcel. Uh, Digislots Lung, if you guys don't know, well now you know Digislots has his own YouTube channel, he uploads a lot of content, follows up with a lot of the tournaments, and um, he's really part of the community, so make sure you guys subscribe to Marcel in his channel, Digislots, I'll leave the link down below. Um, so Marcel, um, now that we know a little bit about why you started playing the Digimon game, you've been playing a lot of... Uh, PPG, have you been competitive in uh, your TCG adventures before? Yes, um, like I was played um, one time, I was top uh, 36 at YCS. And more regionals, I topped like top 8 and top 4, nothing reliable there in the, as in the Yu Gi Oh! TCG. Um, at the Digimon TCG, I topped um, like three, three times, yeah, three times. <laughs> and, uh, uh, as the official Bandai tournament, I topped the top four with the Blue Omni. Um, at TCG tournament before, I was second place. And now this last PPG tournament, I was top 16. Amazing, amazing. So you have, uh, you have been competitive in earlier TCG games, and now it's uh, kind of uh, showing up in the Digimon TCG as well in your new passion. Um, so I would love to jump in and talk a little bit about... Uh, I mean, you're very competitive, you've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh, so I bet you play the, some of the best decks, and is uh, I, I bet that's one of the reasons why you chose Blue Omni Turbo. So let's start with that. Why did you choose Blue Omni Turbo for this tournament? And then we can maybe jump into your, your choices of, of the, the actual cards in the deck. Yes. Um, Blue Omni is like the best, like when I'm talking about Blue, Red Omni, like 
C0 state is, that we have right now because Omnimon is on a power level that other decks can get into it, like they're playing green control to getting over it with Titamon, but I guess Omnimon is like the high rate state card that you can play and you have many outs and other cards in your deck. That's the reason I'm playing too. Because it's so high rated in the rating, the best, like the best, when you play the best deck, you, to, you need to go to the best placings. I just was wondering if uh, Blue Omni was part, like, you, you found it as part of your playstyle. Did you even find your playstyle in Digimon TCG yet? Uh, and I was wondering if Blue Omni fit that playstyle. And so maybe that was one of the reasons you chose it. Um, my playstyle is like, um, like playing Omni as a card, but not in blue, like playing in red because I like red more, like 1.5, testing a lot of friends. Um, with the extra security checks and more playing with Panicramon and board removal. Like, I like board removal and board control. That's like my perfect style and more security checks with red. That's cool. Amazing, amazing. So blue is a little off, but you still love the Omni. And so let's just jump into your selection in, in these blue cards. Uh, so we can start with the Digitama. You went ahead with the Upamon, Wanyamon. Uh, do you feel like uh, five Digitama is the way to go? Is Upamon at four just a bad idea? Um, Upamon at four is a bad idea only when you have a lot of blue Omni in the meta. Like when you have 80% or 70%. Then you have to worry about in the mirror match getting the Vanyumon, getting out advantage about the draw. Um, but when you're playing versus red or green, then you need your Vanyumon to trade so in some, into something, like into an um, Omnimon, or survive security check with your Omnimon. That's the reason I'm playing for Upa and for Vanyumon. All right, fantastic. So right now in the meta, you actually recommend five. Even if it was, even if the Vanyumon was something you wouldn't use, you still would recommend five Digitama 100%. Um, so let's move on to the rookie. This is we've seen this um, a lot, uh, a lot of four. Basically, the number for blue omni, the magic number of rookies is fourteen, and uh, we've seen everybody run six two hard cost uh, Digimon. And can you run us through your selection of rookies real quick? Um, yes. Um, the reason why I'm playing so much rookie is because you are able to rookie rush your opponent when you have a lot of rookies in your hand when you like draw five, maybe it happens you draw five. Yeah. Um, one time I see a guy playing, you can play the Gomamon with the Degrusen stores built in blue too, that's the reason too. But for the consistency, you're playing 40, 40 rookies for the percentage that you draw a lot of rookies in your hand and can, put, and can play it with your opponent. The Gabumon draws you an extra card and the Gomamon gives you an extra memory on deletion. They have very good effects and you have free Alec and free Gomamon for the Vanillas that you can play through your opponent when he has Omnimon, like not playing like four Alec or four of two Gumamon. Like you need to have a good number for playing down hard cast these Vanillas when you play with another Omni deck. That's the reason why you're playing these rookies. Yeah, I, I, uh, we've run through uh, many uh, blue Omni decks that have talked before, like Zuhair's deck, and 14 just seems to be the magical number. And this seems to be a very reliable setup. Um, have you playtested 15 rookies at all, and is there a preference between 14, 15, and 13 rookies? Do you, like, do you, do you, like, have you playtested 13 rookies, 14 rookies, and 15? Oh, I'm sorry, I, was, I wasn't talking to Discord. So, my question is, um, uh, we've seen Zuhair, uh, we, we've covered multiple decks that have topped that are Blue Omni, so we've seen this. This seems like a very reliable setup for the rookies. Uh, 14 rookies and Elekmon at 3 and Gomamon at 3. Uh, so I just was wondering if you ever uh, playtested 13 or 15 rookies and if 14 uh, just feels more comfortable for you or, or is there a preference on 15 possible? Is, is there a possibility basically that we can run 13 or 15 cards and still feel comfortable? Mm, we can run 30 cards like can put your other lines up or playing other cards for that, it's no problem. I play just a lot the government from the structure deck, like when you're attacking, you get ri rid of the delusion source because yep. green's getting more popularity. Um, I guess thir you can play 13 or 14, like 15 is too much, then you ha then you play a lot, then you play all the game Rookie Rush and have most of the time an auto loss versus green because they have a lot of blockers in their deck and hard cast it versus you and then you need to hard cast again and uh, sometimes you don't have the much ma uh, you don't have 
five rookies in your hand, they have two blockers like in Lost. Because they have two blockers and block two attacks. And they can, when you don't draw the evil sorcery, you can use the sorcery for throwing level five, a uh, hard cost level five, then you lose the game. That's the reason I will play 30 or 40 rookies. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a very important question. I think, uh, you know, it enlightened a lot of us for the 14 rookie rush, uh, like the 14 rookie setup. Uh, I think it's a very comfortable number. Even if you break at the first uh, pull or the first five hands, uh, five uh, draw, uh, you can still see him within the next five draws. Uh, you know, you'll still see a rookie within the next five draws. So I think it's really comfortable sitting at 14. And that's why we see it uh s repetitively being repe repeated we just we do see a difference in elekmon and gomamon uh depending on preference but uh really that's the only difference we don't see a difference in 14 15 so i do want to run through the level fours these are also regular there's no way leomon fits in this deck right there's no way you could pull out the garurumon for the leomon it's just gonna hurt the deck too much um i saw a lot of people topping with the leomon in the deck like but you need to play other level fires or other lines up in the higher one when you play leomon it can't fit into the deck but it has to be it depends on the on the meta shifting you have because each tournament we have other decks like percentage going up and down and that's the reason i play my garumon that you can have a synergy with the metal garumon the gorilla one one is perfect in this deck when you have the memory memory playing like you want memory and you can play your gorilla mom and your level five and you're up into the next round the farmer spark fills you getting your level six and getting your power spike down into the game like blocker you need to have in this game because rookie rush is pretty simple i would not, nothing change in this lineup maybe if green getting more popular and you need um, because they have advantage to cost the mimi and you don't have that advantage then you can afford maybe playing a leomon or maybe playing the mad tamer absolutely absolutely you really do need those blockers and they're at four so uh if you're running <laughs> three or two and you lose one that's really it for your blocker lineup and in this meta right now with all the rookies and the mimis and their haste she's she's really the only one unlocking haste basically or rush uh, but yeah ex especially when we see her in the meta we definitely need to be wary and also, you know, it's comfortable. Having a blocker really can stop a lot of red uh, uh, pressure decks. Like, for example, the Metal Greymon, the security attack plus one, it's going to force him to think twice before attacking and wasting five memory if you have a blocker on the field. So it really does completely eradicate certain uh, strategies. So if you're not playing for blockers uh, i would suggest definitely you rethink that now we d we can move on really quickly to level fives then uh, i do see the monzimons at four they're probably a staple there's no way you can ch change that uh, you could run them maybe at, th at three um if you want to open some more room for zudumons uh, but how how was the Zudumon lineup? I, I do see Zudumon and Wergurumons. There's always a difference. I'm 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 always trying to play test and figure out the perfect setup. So how did those the two Zudumon, three Wergurumon uh, feel? I think you're gonna tell me. This is my prediction. I'm predicting you're gonna say that the Wergurumon wasn't as useful as you thought it would be. That's what I'm assuming. Nice. Helped me a lot of winning versus rookie rush. I success playing uh, with Sudumon. I really like Sudumon. Like you can play down rookie, play Hammer Spark with the opponent to six and draw two cards. When they don't have the out, you put down a Plesio. Maybe they hard cast because they have so much ad advantage or don't have level four or five. So just hard cast the Digimon and then you have the one getting memory back because it's Sudumon. And you are break your hand with Sudumon was really really good. Like, I changed my deck list. I playing now one Garumon and four Zudumon. Oh, so you're running one Garumon, four Zudumon. Interesting. So I really, really, since the day I saw Zuhair Zaidi start his last turn in the last PPG tournament, tossing out, uh, uh, he, he evoed his rookie 
then tossed out the Zudumon. I'm not. I don't remember if he hammer sparked before, but he did toss out the Zudumon. And uh, I I did talk to somebody very close to him later on. This was a calculated uh, maneuver. Uh, it was already his one of his favorite openings because it forces the opponent to hard cast units because the opponent is not getting anything. I mean, it's going to be very hard to spend seven memory without hard casting something, especially versus purple. So it allows Zudumon to unlock his second ability, his second inheritable, which when you attack, you gain an extra memory. So, so it unbricked him and gave him all the rookies he needed to end the game. That, that game and it just made Zudemon look so strong, so powerful, so y y y resourceful and uh, so I think that's exactly what you're talking about, that setup of the rookie Evo in the raising area and then if you can hammer spark and just lock your opponent at 2, you just gain 2 memory, you have a level 5 on the, uh, or at 6 memory, I'm sorry, you just gained 2 draw, you have a level 5 on the field that has a really strong inheritable ability and you basically literally force your opponent into a corner and you know exactly what he's going to move next. So you're running for Zudumon now. Uh, and I'm pretty sure basically you're going to see, a, you're going to try to just hard cast as many as you can and try to get that combo out. Yes, sir. So do you think it can hurt you that Zudumon later in the game? Like, is it better to open with the Zudumon? rather than maybe in during the mid game or the late game to, to toss out the hard casting the Zudumon? Zudumon's broken at the mid game or the early game, in game. Like when you see your first hand and we say you brick, yeah? And you have the Zudumon there. And then you can play the Zudumon and I break your hand. Like you're drawing two, uh, like it's when you, when you, when your first turn, you draw two cards. When your second turn, you draw into three cards. Like it's so much um, in the mathematics, when you draw spits into, into something, Maybe you draw into your rookie, then you can play your rookie, or in the next turn, or power play or evolve up to because the opponents, you force the opponents to play something. When you have it in the mid game, it's okay too. Like, they're, they're getting a lot of memory pass when, when you are ahead in the game, or maybe even in the game. When you give your opponent more memory to play, they go and play a little bit more greedy and giving you three or four memory because they want to play out all because you are Omnimon, your, your power level, or your speed of the deck is more incredible than there, um, than the reason you can hard cast him again. And when you're in the late game, it's, it's a nice boy to evolve, but you cost three and be evolving like for level five because it's too, too high. But when you're grinding, it's okay too. They forget that, uh, they forget about the Sudomon, like you promote the Digimon, they have one knocker or one hard cast there and you gain one extra memory, that's okay. Yep, exactly. So I think the Sudomon is very resourceful. The worker Roman is very helpful. It does d apply a lot of pressure. Um, it allows you to put your opponent in a very, you know, uncomfortable position. And I think that's why you still want to keep the worker room on. Uh, do you think that one is going to probably just be bad? I think now talking to you, you saying four Zudumon and one, one worker room on and four Monzimon. I just feel like the perfect setup would be three Zudumon, two worker room on, four Monzimon. What are you thinking? When you go met 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 mathematically, <laughs> um, yeah, it is three to one and two regular room because you want the out with when you're playing versus um, rookie rush. This is the one of the deck you're scared about. Uh, I lost to one of them. Um, then you need a regular room one or when the opponent don't have something and hard cards, then you can play the regular room one get one more security check. The only thing about regular room one because you get greedy in the mirror match when you have Plesio. Or make like a room on out there and you're checking the security before you making your omni play you can get punished for that for the extra security check this is one of the things i don't like about the regular room yeah and digi slot you also mentioned that the zoom zudumon can unbreak you as well so that's amazing that's that's i i get exactly why you would run for that means it, there's almost like seeing a level five is 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 wanted you know like it's something oh yeah it doesn't hurt me at all to see a level five and no no rookies it's fine because i'm just gonna zoom on you um so absolutely i do see merit in the four zoom on um i i mean uh there's so much manipulation and versatility in terms of those two cards worker room on zoom on i just don't see i don't know if we'll ever know the perfect ratio just because you know, the RNG in the game and the securities and everything is so 
right now, because it's the first set, everything hurts so much. You can feel everything. You can feel every security. You can feel like every security is like, oh my God, please, please, please. You know, every security check, every uh, year. And, and, and like we talked about, there's no mulligan in the game. Or maybe we haven't, but there is no mulligan in the game. And we can, we can talk a little bit about how do you feel about that coming from uh, other TCGs. But... Uh, because of the no mulligan, Zudemon just is ten. It just it, it it tells you yes, that's that's a good reason to play me. There's no back back. You know, there's no bad coming from playing me. You will lose maybe a little bit of pressure, but you're gaining a solid, consistent deck that's never gonna break in your hand, and uh, you know, and and an access to a really strong opening that will literally change games very easily in your favor and, and start pulling them so i do i do definitely see the merit in for zudumon absolutely and so uh, uh, let me let me ask you really quickly before we move on what's your uh, what's your thought on mulligans uh, not being in the game uh, do you think that this will hurt this game in the future um i guess no, um, most of the time, like when you have Rookie Rush, they're really getting a buff for that. But I, the first game I was playing for TCG was Pokemon. I get into it when I was a little kid. I played a lot and um, topped uh, German nationals and uh, European nationals. I was really good at this game, getting invited to the worlds. And there, they had their Mulligan system. Um, I liked it a lot. And I liked that if you have the supporter cards, they, they can, it's like an option card you can play and the option card says you can and move your entire hand into your deck and draw into six new ones like that's the thing we don't have about Dig Digimon because we have the lose so uh, we evolve the Digimon and draw one card um, I would recommend to have a mulligan system because I was one of the TCG, TCG tournament like the new year TCG um, TBG tournament I was 4-0 and getting into 4-3 because I, I had like I draw my first hand, so, so four, uh, I played there four Omnimons, now I'm playing three. I have had four Omnimons in my hand and one Hammersburg and was thinking, yeah, what am I doing now? Yeah, man, uh, breaking is real. Um, I've played TTS tournaments where Mulligan was a thing and I promise you it was almost used every single round. You know, and there's always rounds where you're not going to use Mulligan, of course. You're like, oh, okay, I got a three, four, five, I'm good. Uh, but there, man, wow, uh, the amount of times I had to use mulligan was insane. And of course, there's sometimes, you know, mulligans against you, you know, you kind of lose, especially because you have to mulligan your whole hand. I think Cardfight Vanguard did something really good, uh, especially maybe because of the EVO system, Digimon can uh, uh, pull from that where they kind of uh, allow you to choose the cards you want to keep in your hand and then put back some cards I think just because the EVA system that will work so well with Digimon so I'm really hoping to see something like that in the future but besides that um, you're really just forced to play around the brick and that's why Zudumon just again just makes sense uh, let's move on uh, this is another reason I think why Blue Omni is played so much Metal Garurumon just gives you so much value when you when you actually are like basically okay so this is what the deck does it rewards you for playing the game exactly how it's supposed to be played right so it rewards you for playing 46 digimon or 45 digimon it rewards you for just evoing every turn and then you put metal and and besides the zudumon you know the manipulation there with and gives you extra memory when you, when you put the opponent the right and and you know in the right position or wargarumon with the pressure you know uh, and of course, this is very easily accessible to blue. You can you can discard your evolution sources very easily to, for your opponent and with a lot of cards. Like you said, we, there's a Gomamon that can do that. So War Guru, Metal Garurumon just unlocks. The, it makes the deck so strong. And um, so I'm interested in your thoughts. Uh, why three? Why not four? Metal Garurumon is the reason I think blue is just so strong. It just makes the deck so complete. When, when you attack with Metal Garurumon and there's another Garurumon under him, you just literally set up a whole field for free and you still get an Omni out. Uh, I mean, there, there's, it's just very hard for your opponent to come back from that. Uh, so uh, I'm very interested. Why, why not? Why, why are we running it at three? Is it safer to run Pelsimon at four just for the cheap evil? Your opponent all the 
sometimes with one memory. When you give your opponent like two memory, they can only play versus you. Like uh, when the Garry Moon is only good when you um, evolve it into your back line, um, up to the number of like to Metal Garumon, and then the next turn you promote it to Ragarumon, then it has the most power spike. Um, or maybe you are ahead, they have the full evil line, maybe your opponent play Puppet Mon, you can evolve into Metal Garumon for free, then it's also good. Um, I like Metal Garumon really a lot, but I get a lot of punish when I'm making... Uh, my, 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 the best play when you have is the Gabumon at level 3, like you said, the Garumon level 4 and the Ragarumon level 5 under them. Like you swing with your Metal Garumon, Derive your Garumon, ascend and attack again, derive your Garumon and draw an extra card. It's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Like you just demolish the opponent. Yes, and then you have three Digimon, play your Omnimon, get rid of them Digimon, and he thinks, oh, good, now he has five attacks next turn. And four attacks. Exactly, so you didn't just. That's why Worker Roman just. Ugh, it's, it's just so hard, man. This really deck building is an art. Yeah, we are gonna get power creeped. Uh, if there was a meta where tamers were more prominent, which I mean, it's it's pretty much this meta. Uh, it's just that me all tamers are at two. Like later when Sean Gre when we see Sean Greymon and tamers are at like literally eight or or ten of the deck, um, it's probably gonna be not a bad idea to run the Metal Guru mod just for the ex because you don't wanna, you know, you you're free to give your opponent some memory and it's not gonna hurt you that much. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, right now, we are just limited in cards, so it makes sense why you 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 limit yourself in in these decisions. What about the other Metal Garurumon? Is he just too expensive? The four. Yeah, he's just too expensive to play, right? Yep. Yes. That's, that's the thing. There's no way you can see him in the blue. Uh, he's he's already power crept. <laughs> he already got power crept by the other Metal Garurumon. Uh, and we see that with a lot of the structure where, uh, like cards, like especially like with War Greymon as well, the structure deck just is different level than the other one. So now you have to tell me what uh, the Volcanic Dramon at one. Um, yeah. uh, is, is it actually enough? Do you, are you gonna need two in the future? Ah, that's what I thought. Um, I would like to play two, but I don't. Uh, I need to play testing mode with my friends because. Um, Rookie Rush getting more popular, it's like a low budget deck, like $30 and you have the deck <laughs> you can play. Yep. Um, and Volcanic Dramon doing a lot of work, like when you're playing with Contrarius Mon Control, they have uh, CP less Digimons when you play with Green. When they don't have Titermons, they play a lot of Rookies. The Volcanic Dramon comes really handy. Um, you have one security check more and when you half play, you can evolve your Omni into Volcanic Dramon 2, then you have they need to get rid of it or need to get the blocker set up on, on their own board so they can um, answer your volcanic Ramon. That's the reason I played it. Now at one, I would like to play the two, but I need to play this more about when I'm playing two, like when I bring it with more or getting the mathematics, like the percentage of your hands, like how many cards you can draw. I'm like doing that. <laughs> then I'll recommend maybe playing one more rookie or playing one more volcanic Ramon or stay in the lineup. That's really hard choice. I know exactly. So it's a very. I, I bet it's a very difficult choice. Um, the problem. I, I just. I, I know with one, when you have one volcanic drum on, literally, there's almost. It's almost like you know you're not gonna see him, right? Unless you drew like crazy, or you just kind of bricked him in the hand early. Uh, it's almost like guaranteed you're not gonna see him the whole game. So one is if he. That's why I had another problem with Ice Wolf Claw at one. Um, I've heard, you know, now decks are running at one because really, uh, with the Omni, you don't, with the blue Omni, you don't really need too much removal. This is just a little bit to compensate some, some removal you don't have for free. 
um, like the Terra Force, where it just removes for free. So Ice Wolf Claws, just a little compensation to the Omni, where, where when it's difficult to toss out the Omni, you can just toss out the Ice Wolf Claw, and it can also activate in the security. Uh, so we see that, <coughs> but uh, Volcanic Dramon at one, I think that's going to hurt us, just because we don't even want to see him in security, right? Because he, he just runs at 10k. Uh, he's really not going to kill much, except the rookies or maybe... Uh, level four if we're lucky so uh, th that's why uh, i think uh, i mean i love it I, I, it worked out you did good but i'm pretty sure you like i knew you were gonna tell me it's kind of iffy and just that one is just so iffy running running cards at one right it's just uh, there's no recommendation right except maybe an ice wolf claw Yeah, so uh, fantastic. What about the Omni at three? How 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 does that feel? Because uh, before we've covered the past three PPG events, there was no Omni at three. Never, Omnimon was the most expensive card in the game and the most used card in the game. Uh, and now we're seeing a staple of three. If you're running four, you actually might be doing this wrong. So how does Omni at, at, at Please explain to me how does it feel to draw four Omni in uh, first hand. <laughs> really bad. Like the, the reason why I cutting it, I had four Omni on my own. I play, I top with the four Omni, and I, I think on the mathematics it do not really much when you have three or four Omnimon. Like you're playing a lot of more Sixer or going to Mega Room, playing the Pseudomon or throwing your opponent with uh, a Gammon. The only thing you're playing Omnimon is like when they have multiple. Things like two Titumons, then you can get rid of that, or you have the power play or the memory playing that. Because when you give your opponent Omnimon and get rid of one of the Digimons, they can evil, evil line up and draw cards and have another answer to your Omnimon. Like like I said, green getting more popular when you're playing. When I play with green, like I didn't resolve one Omnimon because I play only with level sixes. When you play the Omnimon, you give your green opponent the opportunity to play a Titumon, kill your Omnimon, and you have nothing left. Amazing, amazing. So, exactly mathematically, like you said early on, it probably doesn't make a difference. Uh, four but and three is probably the same probability of drawing. Um, uh, th that's why we see lots of the cards ran at three instead of four, like Metal Guru Ramon. Um, and uh, you said you actually you said something very interesting here. You mentioned that Omnimon is only used for you as removal for a multiple removal. What about big, big guys like another Omni? Is that the only two times you'll ever use Omni is for removing multiple opponent Digimon? Or a huge guy? Or you'll only use Omni for the multiple? Um, when, I, when my opponent like have a suspended Omnimon, I check up the security first, make his attack, get him back on level 6, and then... Um, or like... Like when you have uh, um, Omnimon on his board and I have a Plasiomon on, on my board, like when I have si like I have six memory, then uh, when he has another like Digimon like a uh, Monzemon on his board, like why should I? Uh, maybe there's a Gomamon under there, then we need to talk about that more. But there's only Vanillus under there. Then my situation is like I evolve to the Omnimon, I get rid of the level five because I can kill the Omnimon with my Omnimon. That's okay. You do do his job. Like I swing one time in the security. Wow. Amazing, amazing. So I really love that insight. Uh, it's really hard to to know the right play for Omni because uh, we still don't know, you know, the, how to play the game right. I mean, you will notice this, I think, in the future, especially when the game is out. There's just going to be a huge amount of people that just read the rules wrong. They didn't understand the game. They're, the game is not really easy, this that easy to understand. So the, the right play for Omni, the right usage of Omni, the right utility of Omni, it can be very hard to understand sometimes. 
So it's really cool to hear this from you. You're very, you're very, you know, you like trading your Omni for another Omni, huh? As long as you get rid of his field and you empty his field out and you give yourself an advantage and you kind of set yourself up for, uh, you know, you, you kind of uh, choke his mana, let's call it choking. And uh, I see what you mean. So you kind of set, you, you empty his field, set yourself up. And as long as you're ahead by a little bit, uh, you're very happy. Uh, and I've seen Dex running three Hammer Spark. Uh, do you think that's going to be possible for you in the future? Maybe it opens up uh, space for another Volcanic Drummond? Or is uh, uh, just because you don't run Tamers, that's not going to work out? How do you feel? The best card in, the, in this team sheet is Hammer Spark or Omnimon. <laughs> like, um, I like option cards a lot. I like uh, uh, Hammer Spark is so, so a powerful card. Like, like I said, the, the thing is, we have now people, we are still in the pre-release, like you said, um, like the memory 1-1. One, one. You give your opponent one memory, one memory, then you can play nothing in your deck because you don't have um, the memory of that. You can play a hammer strike, you can go into two, playing a Plesio, you can attack in, into the security, play an Omnimon and get rid of uh, his Titanmon or something like that and you pass the turn. I, with that, or when you're playing with Suzuki Rush, you have, um, they give their also into zero or one memory, then they're attacking to something, then you get the Wilson Slammer, then it's your turn, then you have the opportunity to play it into something or get your setup for blockers and don't die this turn. I like Wilson Slammer and I would recommend playing it at four. Amazing, amazing. And then how was the Ice Wolf Claw at one? Uh, when, we, when did you use it throughout the tournament? Um, the, the tournament I used was in the new box. Like, I saw Dexus playing that, and I think it's really good card. Like, when you, like, like I said, when you, when you play your Omnimon, get rid of the level 5, then play Ice Wolf Claw, put bounce back his Omnimon, then he has nothing on the board, then you need, uh, don't need to, to, um, to trade into the Omnimon. You have your Omnimon, he, he needs to evolve into that, like, playing all his cards, uh, all his um, cards set up for the new Omnimon. I like it very much because you can have another security option, like another option card, and you have five. Like when I see um, red, like you recommend, you, you have their Gaia Force. Green has Terror Cluster and um, Flower Can. Purple has Trump's Sword, Mad Tamers playing that. There are so many option cards because why the decks are good. And I want to make have more like spicy security. That's the reason why I played the Ice, ice Wolf Claw. Huh, interesting. So that's what me and David Shu we were talking about this. Um, and it wasn't on uh, during the interview, which you guys could uh, check out in the in the channel. Uh, we've interviewed David Shu before he topped second in another PPG tournament. He he did talk to me about the Ice Wolf Claw. He felt like it was a perfect card at one, especially for the mirror match to bounce out an Omni or bounce out one of their level sixes. Uh, you know, it's like the last kind of resort when you can't build an Omni or you have no other ways of removal and they've already accessed their level 5 or their level 6. So it really does shine in the in the mirror match, especially it's really beautiful to see in security. It's one of the best cards in security. Uh, it changes games very easily. Um, running it at 1, uh, how does that feel? Does it feel like you want to see it more or is this perfect? Just perfect. Like you, you draw into that like all the time. You have it in your hand, or it's it's under the deck, or it's in the security. These three options you have this card. Like I, when when I played it, like I have two hundred uh, matches now <laughs> on tabletop simulator with my friends, and we made do that the ma mathematics. Like this is the three things you have with this card, but uh, one is fine. Like you don't need it to, like two like the volcanic German. The potential one has a mod. Important job to do, like the ice wolf claw. The ice wolf claw is only good in the mirror match. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, this was an amazing deck. Uh, top 11. I can definitely see it topping in the future. Top one or or definitely top four easily. Um, you. Uh, so really quickly, I have a couple of questions before we run out of here. I know I took a lot of your time. Um, but Fine. but our viewers on the Discord server, if you guys would like to join the Discord server, everything is linked down below. Um, our viewers at the Discord server and guests wanted to ask you a couple of questions. So uh, we have time for maybe three or four. So I'll just toss them your way. Um, all right. So uh, very, very quickly, I would love to know... Um, uh, let's just start with this. Is If you have another tournament tomorrow... 
um, what are what are you gonna change in this deck? Uh, are you just gonna change the level five setup? Uh, is there any possibility to switch out volcanic drummonds, add them, or any rookies? Um, I, at now I only have three pseudomons at home. Like the other one's coming tomorrow. Or <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> the I struggle just... of the pseudomons, man. It's gonna be a really expensive card. Amazing, amazing. Man, it must feel so much better to play with cards in your hand than TTS or, or those random yeah. things. You really will feel the difference, man. I just got a giveaway from Ellie of the Sand and he got me some cards. This is my first Digimon cards and I was so excited to see it. I don't know if you watched the video, but it was yeah. so exciting. The cards are so big. I love those huge cards. I hated Card Fight Vanguard for putting tiny, tiny cards in my hand. I wanted these huge ones. And I'm so happy to see them. Uh, I'm really loving the Digimon cards. It does feel much different to play the game in person than online. And uh, I'm very interested in your thoughts on the webcam tournaments. Um, how is PPG running tournaments, their tournaments? Um, how do you feel going into future PPG events? Are you comfortable playing with PPG? Are there any things you can see that in the future can be changed? And... Uh, just uh, tell me uh, why why do you what what do you like the most about like like okay so my question is basically uh, do you are do you like webcam tournaments is this something good for the community or is this something that's going to create toxicity i'm very interested in your opinion okay now we need to get uh, first aside of the situation we have we are locked down at home this is the best thing you can make a webcam tournament like getting the TCG alive. You have a new TCG bringing out that at the situation that's questionable, but uh, TCG do a really, a really good job doing this. Like the, the guy working there, I talked with George one time, um, and he's also like doing this for a new TCG, getting involved into that. Like, like he's like me, like he saw Digimon in this, uh, when he was a little kid, and Yu-Gi-Oh, like, and doing so much support for the game. Like you saw now in the, Next week we have a two two K tournament, uh, two 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 K tournament, I guess. A two thousand two hundred dollar tournament. Yes. I'm not sure how they are setting up the prizes. Are they actually giving cash or? Yeah, they're giving cash. That's insane. See, that's insane. So you just play Blue Omni and hope to God you never break. And there, <laughs> there's potential you can get those two thousand dollars, man. But I like the webcam tournament. This, this, this is the best you can do at the moment. Like. When, when we are yeah, not locked down, I hope there are a lot of um, tournaments there because like when you have, I played the Dragon Ball cards game and in Europe there are not much player like there get the, the, the more players you have in America. Um, they're playing their more and have the bigger tournaments. Like I need to go there and play the tournaments that I would love to have the webcam tournaments like playing there with other people and not playing with the small German community you have. That's the reason I love the webcam tournaments. You can get involved with other countries. You can meet nice people and you can play the game. Amazing, amazing. So this is really interesting stuff. Um, so you you really like PPG. You appreciate PPG. You really think webcam tournaments are the future. Uh, I really love with the webcam tournament. I cannot believe how easily we integrate it so quickly to a better system than the old system even so fast so quickly in, in, in this time of distress and ppg was able to really um you know y utilize their existing uh, establishment and websites and uh, create uh, man they're creating something i've never seen before a global community global tournaments from day one allowing you to see the global meta we're able to follow it here at the batata nature tcg we've never been able to do this before uh, this quickly with a tcg um you know usually you're just stuck with the local and what's happening is with your local now we're able to see a global scale of the community and their meta and that's why a lot of people are already getting frustrated with the solved metas what people are saying uh, well, everyone just figured out that, you know, kind of Blue Omni is the way to go just because it rewards uh, playing the game right, doing, you know, playing just Digimon and Evoing all the time and um, just conserving memory or manipulating memory in its best way. 
and even Metal Garurumon is just so broken when you get her off. So it makes sense that Blue Omni just has so much utility. Um, so, uh, but 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 we are gonna be able, we are seeing already Jordan Beard with his amazing rookie rush deck. We've seen that 15 uh, spot 15 rookie rush deck. That I saw your video, you covered it. Um, uh, what, like, what, what's your opinion on the meta? Uh, do you, are you are you happy about the future? Do you think that the meta is gonna be secured and solved? Is there a way? Is there gonna be a power creep? I'm very interested in your opinions. Uh, you know, just in general, in the future of Digimon. I, like all my friends saying, they won't go to one point five. I like the meta one point zero. Want to talk about that a week second? I like one point zero because we have such a meta evolvement. Like you see, like the last PBG tournament didn't one blue Omni, it, red Omni, I guess, was the winner at the last tournament. Exactly, uh, blue, uh, red Omni topped one and three, and blue Omni was number four. And purple was number two, so purple is forever number two, but red omni top for the first time in any PPG event number one. Yeah. Like you saw on the graphics, we have more teams. We have now seen rookie rush. Like, like you went, uh, I lost with sim. The only loss I had was with the sim. Thank Are you? Oh, you actually lost to the rookie rush? Yeah. Oh my god! I was gonna tell you, how do you feel about seeing that rookie rush deck? Um, so it was just a little bit, it's just, if it's set up, you know, it's kind of difficult to come back, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, when you don't have any ants, like, I half play one to one and he plays pretty good, then I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> now I have a problem, rolls into my player zero, swing one time, and he swings, like, the fourth time in the next turn, and that is really hard, like, or, or you can do is, like, playing, you, you have 14 rookies, answer that with Rookie Rush and you have blockers like he was playing the 1k blue blocker like I liked it a lot of um, talk to him after the game like I want to see his list and talk about his list like breakdown and uh, he's making really good ideas I, I guess he's evolving his deck more and playing at the next beach tournament I, I, I see him topping the next turn yeah yeah because Zuhair and Levi uh, both top number one and two last PPG tournament. Now they're number 10 and 13. So even if you're number 15, 16, there is still a potential for you to be one of the f number ones, like especially you, you're number 11 this time, but there's always potential now. Uh, and you've proven it that you're, you're up there. So, uh, it's the same people now we're seeing almost every single time. Um, w with a couple exceptions, but it's pr I, I, so, so I think, um, would you say that the meta uh, is what is the meta exactly? Is it a deck or is it a play style? Is 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 the deck is are the cards more important than the player or is the player more important than the cards in in the Digimon TCG game? Mm -hmm. I would say 50-50. Like you need the cards to have to do this thing that they have to do, and the player need to make the right choices and right opportunities. Like playing, I play the level now, playing a rookie or giving my opponent memory what you can do with the memory what, what you can have into his hand what you can do into what his armor um, security checks when you're attacking or getting greedy like there's so much question when you're sitting there and then like you have four three seconds frozen and any opponent is like hey you're damn it and i say yeah i'm thinking exactly 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 because the memory system that's exactly why i'm asking you the, this question it just makes the game so different than any other TCG. You know, usually in Card Fight Vanguard, this is the last game I played. I played Yu-Gi-Oh! and everything, Pokemon and MTG. But the last game I was playing was Card Fight Vanguard. And coming from Card Fight Vanguard, once you attack the last attack, that's it. Your turn is over and you switch your turn here. Uh, if you're playing Card Fight Vanguard, once you attack, you know, they're like, okay, is it my turn? And you're like, no, wait, man, I got a memory to use. So I love the memory system. Unlocks so much plays. Um, I think that's why the meta is safe for now. We are going to see probably a safe meta like the Blue Omni that just rewards playing the game correctly. But that doesn't mean this is the only uh, topping potential. Uh, I believe in player skill level. That's why we, we try to create some... Uh, uh, we've we've experimented with some content on the Batata Nature TCG, open-handed content. And it was so obvious and so easy to see misplays in our hands and in our in our plays because tcg is just such an 
uh, nuanced game. It, there's so much different mechanics that happen. So many things you could do in every every round and every turn, and you really won't know that you you did the wrong play until maybe two or three uh, rounds in the future. So tell me, what do you feel like in the tournament? You created or maybe have done now in hindsight. Maybe there was a better play you could have made, or a, a play you kind of regret doing. Maybe especially against the the rush deck. Uh, do you feel like you misplayed ever d during the whole tournament? Like I'm an experienced player, but I have something to say. Like the last tournament, I had. A miss <laughs> <laughs> you can confess. You can confess. Area and evolved it into Omnimon and said, "Yeah." Tight to one, he said, uh, There are no effects, like, the, you, you don't get the only one. And I say, Oh my god. So you used Omni in Raising Area and you thought the effect goes through, but it didn't go through, and the opponent didn't let you take that back. So that's a huge misplay, huh? Yes, like, um, I didn't have the situation to do this, like, the first time. And when you don't have the situation to make a misplay and learn about that, or not reading the rule book so good, or getting like the rule book is big, and you read that at the beginning. And I play an hour for two months and forget something. Like we are, we are humans, um, and then you are in the situation doing this, and then getting uh, your misplay. You never, you never forget about this as a misplay. Yeah, exactly. Now you're never gonna f misplay this misplay again. Um, but uh, amazing. So yeah, even the best, you played over 200 Omnimon game, Blue Omni games and TTS games, and you still misplay. So, and by the way, guys, I, I also was misplaying. I, I just figured that, I don't know if you guys follow the Digimon uh, card game TCG or Facebook group, but um, I just figured out that you can play option cards if you have the Digitama in the raising area. I didn't know this before. Uh, you just need Digitama, literally you can create a deck with just blue Digitama and then run uh, Hammer Sparks and whatever, you know, big, big level cards you want. So that's really interesting. This makes the day game so uh, sincerely unique, to be honest. It's sincere. The memory gauge system is one, is literally the reason I'm so like hot and bothered about Digimon TCG, you know what I mean? It just opens up your mind. Every game is so different, even if you have, and plus the security system as well. It literally destroys my Metal Greymon, the three security guy strategy, destroys it completely. And uh, it's just it's such a fun game to play. Um, I guess we can go ahead and end the interview here. Uh, Mar Marcel, we took a lot of your time. So I'm very interested. Uh, we have our, our community members. They really wanted to know, do you like pineapple on pizza? No. <laughs> I know. I, I told him pineapple does not belong on pizza. <laughs> Like the next meta shifting, like we have now Omnimon is the best card, and the next meta we have a lot of more security cards to have um, there. We had a lot more draw cards, and we have a lot more GC road. Like we have in the top spot, we have a new Omnimon, the RTRS, and we have um, Greymon and uh, Shine Greymon. Um, I like the new set a lot because now we have decks that can compare with the power creep with Omnimon and getting into the same level, then we can see more matchups in the future. So yeah, so what color are you most excited to see in the future then, uh, just to see the, their power creep? Black. Absolutely, so especially now with the, I think now we're getting our BT 1.5 reveals, finally, and we're getting some removal for black. Uh, there's a five memory cost uh, removal that removes, uh, deletes an opponent that has seven cost memory or less. That's the first removal I've hardcore removal I've seen from Black. Uh, before that, we've seen the long time. Uh, have I seen you before? Something the four cost card that digivolves you, digivolves you, and if you're less than four K, deletes you. So uh, definitely amazing to see because Black was really lacking in terms of removal. It had the digivolving but did not remove. And uh, now that we have a little bit of removal, we can. We, and then we have Sarah Mon, or is that how he, you call him? The guy that just deletes the Omni strategy against you and and forces you to rethink. I mean, absolutely, we will see definitely a, a blocker meta, which is, I, I think, why Skull Greymon might definitely be useful in the future. If you have him as a card, save up 100 of him, 
he'll probably make some money in the future as Skull Greymon, but uh, he'll always be utilized forever. But uh, yeah, so the, 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 I'm most, most excited to see Green. The download is so amazing to see. Um, Green is just so, so good in saving and it's so it's it's just so cheap and it makes sense to play you don't even need to manipulate memory if you can if you have a tamer you just win games for free and if you don't and i'm also uh, now i'm also really excited about the tamers too we have some amazing new blue and green tamers they're gonna really change the game absolutely it's free 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 yeah exactly so black is definitely gonna unlock some place for 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 for, for once finally um very exciting and and then the bt4 meta we're gonna see hybrid tamers and hybrid i mean this is absolutely amazing i really cannot wait to see what digimon has to uh, to offer us uh, any final thoughts you have for our viewers uh where can they find your content where can they find you and talk to you personally if they have any questions uh, can you go ahead and let us know? Uh, you can find me on YouTube on Digital, so that you can check me out. When you have any question about ruling or want to playtest with me, you can find me at the TPC um, Discord server or here in this server. I'm also here in this Discord server. And you can just write me down. I'm just a normal person and then we can play. Um, I will do a streaming at a Sunday when we have Saturday and Sunday. We have Sunday a German. Um, Group there, we play play testing and answer questions, and then Saturday we Amazing! So on Sunday you're gonna do your group testing German German only, no English. No English, we do English. Oh, oh English, but it's your German friends. We can all answer group. We have one Spanish guy, and I can speak Bosnian too. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I'm I'm learning Spanish as well, but uh, so I can maybe help. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, uh yeah absolutely so you get you're streaming on sunday and then on saturday what was the special content you do um the ppg tournament okay you're gonna str you're gonna be in the ppg or you're gonna stream it yes the next the next tournament is uh, a, um, a youtube tournament setting up I don't know the, um, yeah the you tournament. got in there that's amazing it's really nice yeah. to see that you won uh, or not won but you're able to enter I, I i i didn't have a chance to there was no spots but i'm definitely gonna cover the tournament to get some clout out of those YouTubers, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Versus YouTubers and answer questions like, what are you doing as you a YouTube channel? What I'm doing, like switching out opportunities and playing and have a nice day. It's really good. Dude, and you're gonna. It's the sweaty, sweaty 2K tournament at the PC. Absolutely, I'm very interested to tell me if there's any, you know, um, hidden personalities with with bad attitudes or if everybody really as nice as they really look like they are on their youtube channels <laughs> um, no i want you to find me the dirt uh but no no uh this is amazing so you guys can see marcel senki digislots long at uh, his uh, channel digislots on youtube you can also find them in our discord channel down uh, below and uh, you can also find them in the ppg discord channel i'll try to link one the discord channel for you guys um so make sure you guys follow digi slots we are i mean he is his own youtuber he creates a lot of content and he's really smart he's already topping a lot of tournaments so make sure you guys are going to get a lot of value from him so make sure you guys are subbing and checking out his content um besides that really thank you so much marcel for hanging out and talking with us and we hope to see you topping soon. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you for letting me be there. All right, fantastic. We'll see you soon, guys. Take care, Digitamers.